What are you doing on Memorial Day weekend? Well, forget that, because Comic Palooza 2015 is almost here. At Comic Palooza, you'll see your favorite celebrities, comic book creators, and authors. Hear super cool musical acts. Experience crazed cosplay events. Rowdy professional wrestlers. Raucous roller derby girls. Literally thousands of hours of programming and so much more. Celebrity guests appearing at Comic Palooza this year include Jeremy Renner, that's right, Hawkeye from The Avengers, stars of the hit Fox series Gotham, Star Trek's George Takei, oh my, the Fonz himself, Henry Winkler, a comic book superstar Stan the Man Lee, and of course me, Kyle Hebert, that anime and video game voice actor guy. Follow Comic Palooza on social media, on Twitter, at Comic Palooza, Instagram, at Houston Comic Palooza, and like us on Facebook to keep up with amazing guest announcements as they happen. Remember, Comic Palooza at the George R. Brown Convention Center in Houston, Texas, Memorial Day weekend, May 22nd to 25th. Get your passes today. Head over to www.comicpalooza.com for all the details. Okay, um, apparently we were dead that whole way, so that is all my fault. Well, welcome to the Nerdery, sorry about that folks. I'm JD. I'm Jimmy. It's Chris. And, and, and our then, special and our guest, Lewis. Lewis. We're going to fly through this intro because we already did it once. Uh, thanks to Soren for letting us know it was dead air. That mic was off. I didn't even see it. Forgot it was off. It's supposed to actually <laughs> red tag whenever that mic's off, but it didn't. Um, tonight I've got some comics to review. Jimmy, you do as well. I've got some as well. Uh, Lewis will be d- doing a guest game reviews for us, and Chris, you've got the info on the ticket giveaway, and you've got some game reviews. Yeah, I got uh, I've got a couple of game reviews. Got my normal Destiny rant slash news, and uh, a little anime. All right. Well, uh, I know many, 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 many people are tuning in to hear about that giveaway. You got all that info for us? I got all the info. All right. Well, let's just let you do that then. And if you are tuning in, you need to freaking get some other people to tune in as well. Yeah. Yes. Play this for everyone now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We're live and it is Sunday evening. So. Yes. We're here. Yeah, buddy. Go for it, Chris. All right. Uh, What we got going on is get on our Twitter page. And that is at Nerdery Official. Obviously, follow us. And then what I want you to do is tag us and then give a, give a hashtag also and tell us who you're most looking forward to seeing at Comic Palooza. That's part one. You can either do that or part two. If you're on our Facebook, and that's the Nerdery Official. Uh, on Facebook, we have a Facebook page. <clears throat> There's going to be a post uh, later tonight uh, that'll identify for everyone to comment. You know, like, share, comment, obviously. But 
comment, same thing. Uh, who are you most looking forward to, to seeing at Comic Palooza? Uh, you know, cosplayers, the celebrities, hell, midgets. I don't care. Something. <laughs> um, Dust uh, bunnies. Your 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 comment. Yeah. Your, your yeah, comments. Yeah. <laughs> your yeah. comments. will be following and tracking. Uh, we're going to be using um, random.org as a random number generator, and uh, we'll, we'll announce our uh, the winner later. All right. So. Y'all heard it here, and hey, if, if you missed anything, the beautiful thing about Spreaker is you can rewind this and listen to it again. Yes. So. These are archived. Go back and listen to all the rest of them. It, mm-hmm. it goes all the way back to our initial test to see if this was going to work. I left the test up, which probably shouldn't have. Probably need to get in and take that down. But hey, mm. whatever. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> listen to it. You might like it. Humble humble beginnings. Yeah. Humble that's, beginnings. Uh, yeah, we got the ter- fan turned on in reverse today, and it's blowing dust everywhere. <laughs> so, so if you hear anybody flipping out, that's what's going on. Nobody's getting attacked by bees. Uh, let's see. I have, bees! <laughs> I have three comics to review, and this was a tough choice this week, because I did pick up three Convergence issues this week, and I had a hard time picking which one I had to leave out, because we're limiting ourselves to three books. So tonight I have Convergence number three. Which is more than a little interesting, um, and then you also I also have uh, Convergence Green Lantern Parallax number one, which man I, I I couldn't hope for more. I mean it was it's it's awesome. It was that good. It's it's awesome. And then well, I have you're welcome, sir. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. I could not find the uh, the non variant cover. I, I didn't want the variant. And I also have a Top Cow title, The Tithe. I'm actually going to save that for last because from this week, that is, that is the best thing that I have read. I'm re- I'm re- All right, mm-hmm. Green Lantern I'm Parallax. Re- yeah, uh, re- it re- leads off with seeing do do Hal Jordan in jail being visited by Kyle Rayner. When the dome went up over their city, Hal lost all power, as did Kyle. They're both Green Lanterns, however... Hal is full-blown parallax. He has absorbed the entire willpower battery. So, yeah, he doesn't have a ring, doesn't need one. So He it, is a ring. Yeah. yeah. But uh, he he no longer is parallax. He's cut off from that part of his persona. He's cut off from his power. So now he's just back to being normal Hal Jordan, but he still remembers all the, him slaying the rest of the Green Lantern Corps, throwing... Quite a ways back. So this is this to, is going back to Destiny zero right? hour, right? Yes, or, yes. Okay. And he's just ridden with guilt, and then the the announcement comes over, and everybody hears it about the war going on, and the dome falls, and all heroes get their powers back, including Hal Jordan, who once once again takes the form of Parallax, and immediately goes on rampage and. Yeah, it's chaos ensues. It's it's incredible. It, more, another one of those things I did not see that coming. So yeah, I, I'm gonna give that one. I'm gonna give it four four capes. Four capes. I all like right. it, uh, man. I, I I can't wait for number two. And uh, all these little small convergent side stories, they're only getting two issues, <clears throat> so they're all gonna be very very short. Yeah. Uh, Convergence number three, man, they're 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 really getting deeper and deeper and deeper with this story. It's and they're involving more and more and more of the different universes. And I don't want to spoil anything. If you're not reading this and you're even slightly interested, just pick it up. They're including issue number zero. They're only four issues in. It, it it's it's worth the read. It's it's getting better and better and better and better. So. I'm also going to give that one four capes. Now, I, I, I'm ashamed to say I am grading everything this week on a curve. All because of the tithe. Top Cow, uh, written by Matt Hawkins. I mean, this is... I, I love it. It's it's about a pretty much a modern-day group of Robin Hoods. They are finding corrupt, fraudulent megachurches and are robbing them blind. <laughs> and then leaving all the evidence to prove to the FBI that these churches are committing fraud. And then they take these millions that they steal and they give them to charities. That they get away with. <laughs> that they get away with. They've completely gotten away with all with all this so far. And man, I, 
I, five capes, hands down. I cannot wait for number two. Wow. I have wow. not been this pumped up in quite a while. It, like, it's it's incredible. If you haven't read it, find it, read it. Top Cow, The Tithe, number one. It's, the art's beautiful. The storyline is awesome. The characters are great. The, there's a lot of character development. And the number one also will give you a short story about all the main characters that are in it so far. So, yeah. If you haven't, if you haven't even heard of it, find it, pick it up, read it. It's a great read. Five capes, hands down. Nice. Awesome. Very nice. And this is the first small publisher title that I've just fallen for. It's it's not your main mainstream and it's not uh, superheroes. No. So that's that's definitely a step I, I would away say, from your norm. I would say this is no <laughs> cape and mask, but you know, it's it's if you like heist movies you're gonna love this. Mm. Italian job kind of thing. Yeah, and uh Matt Hawkins is a self proclaimed atheist. And but he he actually ha- there has a pretty good little thing on the back page talking about you know if if you are religious I'm not trying to Offend, unconvert you yeah. Yeah. I you know I I envy you and I'm I'm proud of you for having faith I just don't I want to but I don't so yeah it's there's a whole bunch of stuff entailed in this and it's hmm. it's a thick book for the price that you pay nice. I don't even remember awesome. what I paid for it. Even if I paid five bucks, it was worth it. <laughs> I could have paid ten dollars for it, and I'd still be smiling about it. It's awesome read. <laughs> Jimmy, what do you got for us? Well, let's see. This week, I've got Chrononauts number one. I've already done a review of this book, and uh, I did pick up issue two, read that, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. I thought Chrononauts is really cool. It's about these two guys who figure out a way to do time travel. I'm and, looking at the uh, cover right now. It looks pretty yes. awesome. The the second, the, well, that's what I was going to get into. Um, the second issue, they did a movie variant cover just like this one. Oh, this yeah? is this is like a second printing of the first issue. Oh, and they decided to go with a movie variant, and it's it's a Back to the Future mm-hmm. variant. Uh, the the second issue had a Top Gun variant. Nice. So it was, it was really cool. Um, nice '80s throwback. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean this this book is crazy. I highly recommend you read it. The artwork's the artwork's decent. Um, it's a little choppy. It's not it's not smooth lines, but it's palatable, man. It, and actually, I'm, it's kind of growing on me. I mm. like the storyline. I highly recommend you read it. I'm gonna give this one. Uh, I'm gonna say four and a half chimichangas. Uh, the next one I have up is the Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, and uh, I did see a preview of this in the previous issue, this is issue number four, and three, they did show a preview of the cover, and I am more than impressed because I was a big fan of Marvel vs. Capcom back in the day, as well as, you know, the whole slew of Capcom, Marvel crossover crossover games. Yeah, I was a big player. Actually, I competed uh, with MVC3. Nice. And uh, I went to, I think the highest I went was EVO. Oh, okay. And I got to semifinals in the loser's bracket, and then I I was out. But I, I I was able to go to EVO and play, and that was actually a very, very cool experience. Yeah, that's for someone that's, my age at the time. That's fucking awesome, man. If, if okay, now the Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, um, it's a great book. Uh, <laughs> I highly recommend it for a female audience. Uh, kid, it's very kid friendly. Uh, anybody can read this. It's it's not uh, the content in it is is not too far fetched. What's the rating on it? Um, Marvel actually does it's, do it's ratings. A, it's a rating. It's a rated teen. Okay, teen. There, there is, there is. Uh, I, I have yet to find anything that that's horribly offensive. I think teen's a little higher rating for it, but you know that's what Marvel rates it at. What I like about the cover is it's like a throwback to Marvel versus Capcom, Marvel versus Capcom Two, uh, X Men versus Street Fighter. It's got Squirrel Girl and Galactus done up on the cover like they're they're about to you know go at it. So it's, it's really cool. Uh, I read a little bit of it, kind of flipped through, just because I was crunched for time. And uh, it looks like Squirrel Girl and, and Galactus have a little powwow, and and uh, she actually, in, it, it ends the issue with them being friends. Huh. And wow. him giving her a card saying, I can uh, see that. If I you're, can see that. If you're ever in, in the mood for some heralding, you know, give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> so... 
it, 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 it's an interesting book. Uh, it's got its humor and it's it's very lighthearted. So if you're looking for something that's lighthearted, not not too heavy. Uh, if you're a fan of Howard the Duck, I highly recommend uh, Squirrel Girl as well. Um, the other one I have here is Blood Lagoon Part Two from Dark Horse. It is a grindhouse comic. Uh, they're they're basically doing the series as like two part stories. So this is the second part of uh, this Blood Lagoon series. This is a little two issue mini series. I haven't read it unfortunately, but uh, I am eager to. I love the cover art. That's that's yeah. Old, uh, old school movie poster. Right. Yeah, it's and that's the exactly house thing that yeah, they the do. Thing. Uh, plumbing the depths of trash since 2013. That's, <laughs> what, that's what the little caption at the bottom of it is. And, it, and it, it really fits in with that, you know, old drive-in, B-movie schlock. But you have film. read your other two, right? I've read the other one. Okay. Um, I could not find issues one and two. Oh, no, no, the uh, the other two uh, issues you're doing. Yes, tonight. yes, I already did. What was the ratings about? on those? Um, well, let's see. As I said, with Chrononauts, four and a half. Um, I'm gonna give, I did not give Chim- a chimichanga rating for Squirrel Girl, but I'm going to say five. Five? Five, five, five was amazing. Uh, okay. uh, Blood Lagoon, I have yet to read it, but just for the cover art alone, I will give it four. Awesome. Well, uh, before we move on any further, I want to give a shout out to Jessica and Alyssa, who are apparently listen, listening live because they're already interacting with us on Twitter. Awesome. Throwing their names Amazing. in the hat yes. for those tickets. Good choice, Jessica. Good choice. Uh, Who did she pick? Uh, Haley Atwell. Oh, Agent nice. Carter. Nah. Well, well, since we're on the topic, oh, let's throw in our dream meets. Well, hold on. Matter of fact, let me throw this in also. <sighs> Haley Atwell, uh, Agent Carter, she is only going to be there one day yeah, one for Comic Palooza on that Friday. One day. Come on. Let's get to her. So yeah. who's, who's your dream meet? Who, do you, who are you looking forward to meeting? Oh, man. I don't uh, think we're going to be even across the board here. Come on now. Come on. Be okay. Real. All right, folks. Who, who did we buy passes to go see? Yeah we, yeah, we bought VIP passes for Stan Lee. I'm really pumped to get my Stan Lee Superman sign. But outside of that, <laughs> i got to say, Kevin Eastman. Uh-huh. That's I do have his variant cover That's right. of the death of Donatello. I will be taking it with me to get it signed. Thank you, Chris, for getting that out of my box for yes. me. I, I, okay, I'm, I'm going to say, aside from Stan Lee, I am eager to go to the Piper's Pit and meet Rowdy Roddy Piper. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm actually going to take my Saints Row the 4th. Oh, wow. Nice. Actually, probably both copies I have. I have the Presidential Edition, or the Commander-in-Chief Edition, and the regular edition of it, and get him to sign it, because he was both voice talent, and you could call his character up as a homie. That's awesome. Plus, they did reenactment of him and Keith David, and Keith David was an actor on there, doing the whole <laughs> oh, knockdown nice. drag out from They Live. So I, I'm totally down to get that autograph. Mm-hmm. All right, how about you, Chris? Who, who are you looking forward to outside of Stanley? Outside of Stanley now, okay. Um, man, honestly, uh, it's it's a hard choice. So I'm just gonna say the cosplayers. The cosplayers. The cosplayers. Uh, Man, I like the dress up. It's awesome. I'm not not aside from being dirty minded, you know myself. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we'll but, restrain him when but, we bring him to the convention. <laughs> but I do, I do like the cosplayers. I think it's cool, especially it, the the ones that get real creative and and make, make their, their own, own costumes. Man, I, I give props to that. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, it, it, it's awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, I know, I know, I actually have a dream interview as well. Interview. Dream interview. Would it probably have to be Jeremy Renner. Mm. Oh wow! Well, Hawkeye. Yeah. yeah. That, you know what would you ask him? So how how did it feel to get burned alive at the end of twenty eight weeks later? <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> sucked. <laughs> Actually, most of my questions would probably be comic book related. Are you a big reader? If so, what are you reading? What What are you reading? Because I I, I want to know what other people are into. Oh. oh, we got another shout out. Jessica, she's still going at it. Let's see. Jessica, I want Haley Atwell there all days, but I'll I will for sure be there on Friday. Tag, no worries. Awesome. That's awesome. That's what I'm talking about. And Nicholas, yeah. Nicholas is also listening live. Yes, uh, he also says Haley, Haley Atwell, Atwell because Haley she Atwell. kicks ass. There we go. <laughs> there we go. All righty then. Thank you. Thank all you guys just for listening. She she's the original Shield agent. Man. Yes, exactly. Yes, she is. Exactly. The very first Shield exactly. agent. Exactly. So first. yeah. 
Yeah, well, Jeremy Renner's my dream interview. You have one? Who you would love to interview oh, who's going to be man. there? If it wasn't him, then it would probably be Eastman as well. See, I wish I had the name. Uh, the, get, the guy who plays uh, Edward Nigma on Gotham. Ah. Because mm. oh, wow. he seems to know his character so damn well. And, yeah. and uh, the last episode I watched, man, you see him take a dark turn. Very dark turn. It's it's. Uh, I'm I'm just. I want to ask you. You know what 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 was his method in getting into that role? Yeah. What, what, you know, what inspired you, that? How did you motivate yourself to be that? You know, be that character. Yeah. You know, it, knowing where that character ends up, and you know how how did you figure out how to portray him the way you did? Because the the show takes a lot of creative license. Yeah, I mean, it, you're well, seeing, it's DC, and that's the beautiful thing about yeah, DC. You're seeing characters put in positions that they've never been put in before. You're trying; they're trying to tie a lot of things together that weren't tied together that way before. And, yeah, and it's it's they're doing an awesome job. But really, all the actors on Gotham are, are fucking amazing. So if you haven't watched that show, I highly recommend it. Uh, fucking do it. Yeah, <laughs> sit down and watch Gotham. Chris, do you have any uh, dream interview you'd like to do? Dream interview? Uh, I'm going to go straight up. Linda Blair. Ooh. Ooh. And y'all know why. Yeah. Come on. Pea soup? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because that is still, to this day, one of my favorite movies ever. Wow. I like the horror movies. Uh, yeah, I'm a gamer. You know, I, I like the anime and everything. But man, don't get me started on horror movies. Oh yeah, I got the database in my head. I can go at it for hours. I, I'd have but to. The Exorcist, the original. My God, I just, wow. I'd have to say yeah. uh, if, if you did that, I'd have to be right beside you with my mom's high school yearbook. <laughs> <laughs> because everybody used to mistake my mom for Linda Blair when she was a kid. That's awesome. Nice. And That's I, awesome. I, yeah. I want to see Linda Blair. I'd like to shake her hand, give her a hug, and tell her just just tell her wow, just tell her wow, and and that is still one of my favorite movies. To this day. Also, uh, as I got older, uh, she also reminded me of Linda Blair. Uh, and, and, you know, every time she got angry, I was worried her head was going to spin around. And, <laughs> and start puking everywhere. Yeah. Start puking everywhere. <laughs> Jimmy! Yeah. Randomly walk in the middle of the room. All right, let's move everywhere. this, uh, uh, this uh, little bandwagon uh, along here. Chris, what do you got for us? Uh, a lot, a lot of what I got is for discussion. A discussion, but okay. I got a couple of previews. I got, I still got my Destiny rant. I got a rant about Destiny every damn week, but not that bad. I'll skip the rant this time. House of Wolves, the second expansion for Destiny, Xbox One, PS4. Man, third expansion. Sorry, House of Wolves is third. Third, third. Sorry, third. Well, He's that well mad it's, about a thir- it. it's a third game. <laughs> that mad. No, no, it's, a, th- no, it's it. a third game. No, no, it's a second expansion. It's the third part of the game. It is the second expansion. Sorry, sorry, I had to correct you immediately on that one. No, no, no. The the the, the Crota one was the first. You know about the original game was the original game. Uh-oh, well, what about see. Vault? Huh? Uh-oh. Vaulted Glass. That was the first game. Was that the yes. first? Yeah, the, that raid came in all I with don't that know first. What you're talking about. But. I don't either. <laughs> the, the, the second expansion, man, I, I got to watch the Twitch Bungie reveal. Uh, that blew my mind. You need to calm down. That blew my mind. It, it's, uh, all, all the new things are going to open up. All the, the, the fixes uh, that they're going to do to the first expansion, they're, they're just going to... I, I think they might actually turn it around and Deadpool. get a lot more of their players back. Um, that, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Uh the, the guns with the upgrades and the armor with the upgrades, I'm I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Um, let's see. What else What else do I have? I have... Uh, I just lost it here. Sorry, give me a second. Uh, Lewis, jump to what you got. Uh, what I got is, um, if anyone's actually picked it up, it, last week was the release... Of Mortal Kombat X. That's what I want to hear about. Now, by far, I still think Mortal Kombat X is going to... Re- with it going further for Mortal Kombat X, is going to re- reevaluate and revolutionize how fighting games are made. Between between the different variations that you can use between each character, you have you have keep away game, you have close close encounters, you have normal characters that would go ahead and keep away, use keep away... 
they now have a variation where it makes them hand to hand combat hmm. fighters and does it effectively, efficiently. Wow. Uh, so it's good flow from it one is a, smooth transitions. No, we're talking leaps and bounds. I, I mean, we're we're talking like leaps and bounds from Mortal Kombat Nine to to Mortal Kombat X. It, it's it's just it's a completely different yeah. game. And I'm I'm very 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 proud to be a Mortal Kombat fan was and have competed in Mortal Kombat at one point when I was doing competitive play. Actually, Mortal Kombat X has <clears throat> made me consider going back into the competitive scene. I think that's what he's saying. That's right. And you and you have done competitive gaming. I have done competitive now. Gaming. Now this is fighting games, correct? Yes, I'm a fighting game nut. If it's a fighting game, I've played it. At some point, to some degree, it may not have been as extensive as other people, but I have played it. Okay. Time Killers. Time Killers? You ever played that one? <laughs> Probably not. You gotta Dude, remember, I'm 27, Dude, that was, and okay. I didn't have access to a whole lot of games. That, that was an arcade <laughs> unit that they had down at Alameda Skate Rink back when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, well, see, come on. No, 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 no. This one was really cool. I mean, this was like, this, this came out about the same time Mortal Kombat did. It was it was done up very much like the Capcom style, but you had different fighters from different times, and they all had their own special weapons. Mm. Now the 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 thing about it was you could hack away at each other and actually chop off limbs until your opponent or you had no limbs left and you lost. That sounds, that sounds like one I think I might have played. I just don't remember the name of it. It's time killers. Time killers. Yeah, because I've played quite a few fighting games where it was like that. That was how you won is chop. You know, pretty much where your opponent cannot fight back. I just had to throw that one out there. I, I, I don't know of too many people that know about that game. Well, see, that's not for that's not right. Mm-hmm. Hey, we that's we got a couple of shout outs we got to do this week as well. Yes, yes um, we do. Huge props to Southern Vapes, Derek and, and uh, Steven over there, man. And then uh, there, well, there's a kid that works there that looks just like my little brother, and I don't I. For the life of me, I cannot remember the kid's name. I can just call him Chris because that's my brother's name. So big shout out to my little brother over there. Thank y'all guys for taking taking care of us the way you do and doing what you do. And man, I carry y'all's business cards around with me everywhere and hand it out to anybody who even asks me about vape. Uh, yeah. They're located at 322 East Texas Avenue. And once again, I forgot to get the phone number in front of me. Who's but uh, Southern, Southern Vapors. Vapors. Southern um, Vapors. Also, All Star Comics. Uh, over there in San Jacinto Mall, but not for long. They will be moving across the street. There we go. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, huge shout-out to Jay and they both be, Chris's. They will be breaking free of the tyranny of the mall. Of the San Jacinto Mall. Yeah. Of the restricted hours. Yeah, restricted yeah. hours especially. Let me jump in with that Southern Vapors. That's 281-837-3543. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, Jay, both Chris's. Man, thank you guys for taking care of me. And thank you, Big Chris, for recommending the Tithe. Man, uh, if you're not listening, I'm going to be telling you Wednesday. I uh, can't wait to see you guys again. I want to say thank you all for the for the few times I've walked in there. Thank you all very much for the customer service. You guys have been great. Yeah, unbelievable. If you all haven't been, you all are in the area, go. The, hands down, the best customer service I've ever received in a comic book store. And enough merch to feast your eyes for ages. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I haven't raided the bargain bins in probably about two months. I'm, uh, you're probably oh. better for not doing that. Shut up, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be coming back with uh, TV, uh, movies, previews. I got a little bit of anime. Uh, whenever, we, a, whenever we come I back. I still got a few more games to review. We'll so please, Lewis. come back. We'll be we'll back, be back in, in a, a half hour. Yeah, that's right. And uh, You take a break. I'm going to shove this in your ear holes while we fade away. Comic Palooza 2015 is almost here. You'll see your favorite celebrities, comic book creators, and authors. Hear super cool musical acts. Experience crazed cosplay events. Rowdy professional wrestlers. Raucous roller derby girls. Literally thousands of hours of programming and so much more. Remember, Comic Palooza at the George R. Brown Convention Center in Houston, Texas. Memorial Day weekend, May 22nd to 25th. Get your passes today. Head over to www.comicpalooza.com for all the details. Thank you, guys. We'll be back in 30 minutes.